So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming uh, to this uh, uh, official guide 2019 launching ceremony. And then, as usual, before the launching ceremony, we have some sort of a panel discussion because uh, the interview cannot cover so many uh, uh, information. So, before we start, I would like to take this uh, opportunity um, to propose a word of thanks to uh, some uh, contributor and also uh, the interviewer who are. Most of them, all of them are actually our ex-co member. The uh, contributor, one of the contributors is uh, Professor Cecilia Jen of Hong Kong U. Uh, he's, he's coming. And then uh, my fellow uh, ex-co member, Mr. Tong Li Hao, Alice Tam, Gilbert Chen, Sutton Zheng, Vincent Kopp, Patrick Ng, and uh, Ms. Alice Tan. And also a special thanks uh, goes to the Secretary of Support, uh, particularly uh, uh, Irene and uh, Mia. Okay, now. We are, the topic of uh, this uh, version is called the uh, cyber crime and telephone deception. As we know that the uh, crime rate in the physical world has been dropping over the years, but we get to say that uh, the crime rate in the cyber world and also telephone deception, the other way around is uh, keep on increasing. So that's why we choose this uh, topic and uh, for some interview, ground theory, and then we would like to share some best practice and update information to increase the awareness of the, uh, of the public and also the reader can more or less uh, get some uh, updated information. Okay, now, in this interview, the first 12 interview, and then in the cover letter, in the cover story, uh, and also the detailed interview uh, to uh, uh, Andy, we got some update information. Up to uh, 2015, we have uh, 2008. 180 cases of uh, telephone deception, and then uh, keep on dropping after they uh, developed this uh, ADCC, the Anti-Deception uh, Coordinate Center in 2017, and then the figures start to uh, drop to uh, 991 in uh, 2017. So apparently, your center did a very good job. And then out of this uh, deception, and then we can see that the most, the most popular one, I cannot say popular one, but the most <laughs> uh, preference method to conduct this uh, deception, you guess what? It is not guess who, but uh, the most popular one is this uh, pretending official. Yeah, pretending official. I don't know whether there is any uh, update uh, or trend, so maybe uh, before we start, can, we, can I invite uh, Andy to update us any update information? Thank you, Hubert. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this um, great occasion to share the uh, um, anti-scam experience. Uh, first of all, I'd like to I'd update something. Um, uh, actually, as uh, Hubert said, um, the crime trend, the overall crime trend in Hong Kong is actually getting better and better. For uh, over the past 10 years, the crime is keep on decreasing, but deception is keep up going. Uh, in fact, this is not only the trend in Hong Kong, it is a global trend because uh, hard crime is getting less and less, um, but uh, deception it is um, hard to detect and, and uh, the punishment may be less than the hard crime and they earn a lot of money. So uh, um, deception, I, I believe that it will not uh, be going down in, uh, in the in the, in the future, but rather we were going up, so we need to keep an eye on this particular crime trend. Uh, regarding um, telephone deceptions, um, yes, the fact that um, uh, in several years, for example, in 2015, there are 2,000 something telephone deceptions in Hong Kong in that year, but um, it kept going down. Last year, there's 900 something telephone deception in a year. And this year is uh, a little bit better. This year, uh, up to last month, there, uh, there were, that's the figure is 600 something, 600 odd telephone deception case uh, in the first 11 months of this year. And the most prevalent one remained the uh, pretend official. Pretend official is... Pretend official is that um, I think many of you may have um, received such telephone call, a pre-recorded message saying that this is the immigration department and you have an important letter 
and you please press one to, to uh, make an inquiry. And then after you press one, there is some, someone speaking in Putonghua and, uh, and say that they, uh, you, you may have committed some offenses in the mainland China and you need to transfer money to uh, prove your innocence or perhaps uh, you need to um, transfer all your money to a safe account. So, and after that, after to prove your innocence, the money will be returned to you. Those kind of things is the pretend official um, crime trend. Uh, it remains um, high. And more importantly, nowadays this kind of um, scam is not only treat, uh, trick the old people. In previous time, many old people or elderly people fell falling into prey, but um, recently, those kind of scams are all, nearly all pretend official ones are under 30, and a lot of them are, main, are university students. And, and recently, they are secondary students as well. So um, it remains a preference. So I'm going, so with this, uh, I hope we can work together, see whether we can do anything to um, better that tactical situation. Yes, thank you. Actually, um, the industry, the, particularly the, uh, the service operator, have been uh, doing very hard in uh, helping to fight against the cyber crime and telephone deception. And uh, also, um, the police are kindly took us to visit the uh, ADCC. They call ADCC in Samzhen, in China? Um, something similar. They call a anti-telecom and anti-telecom and telephone I see. deception. But that was very impressive. Um, if you take a look to this uh, movie called Chai San Wan Si Soya, right? More or less the same, but they a little bit exaggerated. I've been mean, the center is more even bigger and, uh, and modernized. But uh, when we went to this center, I was really impressed. There was the 25, 24 by 7 call center, and beside that, the one corner sit all the uh, operators there. I think they can monitor and then, uh, you know, all these uh, call going on. And uh, on the other side, there are representatives from the banker who can stop the payment if there's any suspected uh, uh, scam on the request of, uh, of the police, of course. So, um, well, we don't have this uh, luxury in Hong Kong, but more or less, uh, they are doing a lot of uh, hard work. So, now, since uh, we have a rep representative expert from uh, Smart Tong, Hutchison, uh, HKT, and uh, City, uh, uh, CITIC, so maybe uh, each one of you share with us what kind of uh, features or product or apps you can uh, you know, share with your customer to fight against telephone deception? Maybe I can uh, start first. Um, I think Smart Tone has been in the market for 25 years. I still remember when we started 2G and we talked about voice and 3G about a little bit data. 4G then everybody talked about mobile broadband and we've been seeing a lot of changes you know, how we actually offer a best class of service in Hong Kong. Um, to us, I think, to provide the best customer experience is always our DNA. Um, not just about using the service, but how can we ensure when the customer using the service, they have the peace of mind. So they don't need to worry whether you know, the service has been compromised or somehow, you know, when they use the apps, the apps actually been hacked. So over the years, I think we have been working together with our partners and uh, offering two major services, I would say. Um, they back 2011, um, when there's a lot of uh, telemarketing calls, I think if we, all of us probably, if we have the experience of traveling around the world, uh, midnight, a call come in and they're saying, you know, do you want to have a fitness uh, service? Uh, that cost me $20 or $30. So that time, we, we also have been thinking how we can help the customer to, to really be able to eliminate this sort of unnecessary uh, nuisance call. Uh, we work on a service call we call call guard. And that has been very successful in the market. With the call guard, they basically we will actually prevent all those unwanted call to get reached to the mobile. So you don't, you don't need to worry whether there's a, you know, a, a, a trustworthy call or, or a source of a you know, telemarketing call. You know, we have a database at the back end. We contain all those you know, untrustworthy uh, calling number. 
So whenever those number call in, we will actually automatically bar the call, so the call will not reach to the customers. And actually, the phone they will not notice there's an incoming call in, come in. We already, you know, basically deny the call in. So that actually has been giving a quite good, I would say, protection in terms of a, you know, peace of mind. So the customer they don't need, or they they will they will have a worry free to receive all those uh, you know nonsense and and, and disturbances. Uh, three or four years ago, we, when we noticed a lot of uh, data uh, coming, and everybody talk about mobile data, mobile internet, uh, they also opened up an opportunity for all the hacker, and take this as a business, or it's opportunity to steal, uh, you know, very really important customer information. I mean, we all know there's a lot of uh, major incidents, even recently in Hong Kong, there's, you know, a lot of uh, personal information being compromised and God know how they are going to use. Um, with this in mind, I think a few years back, we have been working with uh, our partner, uh, a leading uh, cybersecurity company uh, in the US, Simperion, uh, to develop a service, what, what we call ST Protect. With the ST Protect, you just need to download the app. The app will actually detect if there are any malicious activities going on. For example, Nowadays, everybody easily, when they travel around the world, over in Hong Kong, they try to connect to free Wi-Fi. And we all know that there's a lot of free Wi-Fi. It's actually it's a fake Wi-Fi. It's not safe. You may go into a, a coffee shop. They, may have to, they, 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 they can offer you the free Wi-Fi, but you never know whether that is actually a trust or untrust. With the SC protect, basically, it will automatically detect whether it's an unsafe Wi-Fi and will alert the user so as the user can make a judgment whether he still want to continue and taking the, the risk to compromise their personal information or they should stop that you know, connectivity right away. I think that actually, to me, is very important. Somehow, every day we go out to talk to our customers to educate them you know, what needs to be done. I think people is a people. You know, convenience is always overriding everything. Whenever you, you, when, when you, when you sit in a reading room, you may actually know it's really sensitive. You need to be very careful. But when you go into a coffee shop, for the reason, you just connect the free Wi-Fi because you feel, okay, here is a coffee shop, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi from the service provider. Why, why, why bother? But with the app, if that is really unsafe Wi-Fi, it will actually alert you and, and inform you right away. Well, that's very important. SC Protect also help you to identify if there's any man in the middle, uh, so as to prevent any unnecessary, you know, uh, attack on your personal information in the phone. I see. So this is an app. So I believe uh, uh, two apps: the Core Card apps. and the SD Protect. Okay, yeah. I, I believe a similar app is also available in the Hard Center. Um, I'm Evelyn, head of the um, digital security and compliance team in our company. Actress, um. My company, um, my 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 team's role mainly to um, to ensure our uh, our company have a good or uh, plan on uh, cyber security strategy and also framework. Mainly focus on our um, network and also uh, data security. It's, it also is where we talk hot topic in uh, today. Yeah. Um, come back to the uh, to the story uh, as Stephen mentioned about the. Uh, about the unsafe uh, Wi-Fi hotspot in our environment, actually, um, our company already um, uh, worked with a checkpoint to deliver a service related to uh, to, so, uh, to prevent uh, to prevent our customer to be uh, store the uh, uh, data from their uh, mobile device. The name is a uh, song alarm. Um, the function is mainly uh, to detect uh, the unsafe uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and also um, to scan all the files which download from this uh, Wi-Fi environment so that to prevent any uh, malicious uh, surface will be running on the uh, device. Actually, I think uh, the surface itself will help our customer very much. But the main issue is uh, the awareness of the customer, how we can ensure that uh, our customer have a 
good awareness of the uh, malware or any cyber crime will be had to their uh, device. The main issue is how, um, we, we will want to have a um, good uh, alert to the uh, customer when they uh, think that um, or they, they, they feel the environment have been or their de device have been had. Um, for example, um, in, in the mid of the, this year, actually we our, our company already detect a unidentified payer would like to um, attack our device um, for uh, some um, uh, hacking mechanism. At this moment, um, we, we, we think that this, uh, this mechanism may not have a good name, but now we can, we can uh, name that this name is a one wing, one cut, um, the, the Maria name. Um, what's the mechanism of this? It is um, the, uh, if the people who are receive a, a, a call um, from overseas call, and then they just head up a one or two uh, ring, then at that moment, um, the, the receiver, maybe our customer, would like to call back this uh, number. At this moment, um, they will increase some in international call charges. To prevent this uh, will be happening in any customer, so we will we are immediately to respond this as, as come in our environment to for uh, maybe um, just for us uh, SMS immediately to inform all our customer, and also we post this uh, information to our website and also the uh, corresponding uh, uh, social media. So we we hope that we will um, work with all the uh, industrial payer to continue to support our environment to combat our uh, the coming uh, cyber crime. So this is our real f our in our company. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Erin. I'm sure every one of you here had uh, this kind of a uh, one ring experience. So normally I ignore those calls, and uh, but uh, sometimes I ignore all the uh, call stuff from a fee. So maybe sometimes if you call, I also ignore. OK, now uh, HKT and CSL uh, had the uh, biggest customer base in Hong Kong. So uh, um, Peter, can you share first, how do you protect your okay. customer? OK, uh, firstly, start from fixed uh, network first. Fixed network, you know, now all the telephone deception, basically, I would say mostly come from overseas. And I think um, police and uh, already do, uh, uh, together with Ofka do a good job is try to uh, make some arrangements showing that uh, it must be a uh, calling um, There's a clear identity like the country code. It's a default. So we know it is a real uh, International com coming in in the past is those uh, Vic uh, Deception call they come with an incomplete uh, Call like it's, it could be a pretend as a local mobile call or local uh, call uh, number and so makes the call the party a big confusion. I have a chance to, uh, with um, the arrangement by Andy, visit to uh, Dongguan, the deception center. It's amazing. Uh, they can have the real time, as uh, Hubert mentioned, that they can stop the payment because all the 30 uh, some merchant banks actually sitting in that deception center. And they have a, a mobile, um, the network operator is also sitting there. So trace the call, uh, make the deception. But I, th I think Hong Kong may not be able to, de uh, to do that due to a lot of regulatory and legal issues. What I'm trying to say in the fixed line, it's very, very difficult for a fixed operator to do anything. Because uh, firstly, for call tracing, we need to be instructed, let's say, from police. But the timing-wise, it's uh, difficult to trace. If uh, according to my knowledge, those incoming call actually could route through a, a number of country, normally uh, maybe different data center. It's very difficult for you to trace them. Traditionally, I think in the old day, if uh, we have a deception call, and which back to the uh, 20 years ago, those are program switch exchange. You can actually hold the call and trace it step by step up to the distant country. But this time, it's not easy because mostly using IP platform, as I said, from different 
country server platform, and they pretend to be a, 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 a PSDN or mobile number. So firstly, difficult to trace. And then secondly, most of the uh, affected customer, the victim, they seldom uh, contact the telecom company like us. So I guess that the, right now the best way is uh, we should work as an industry, the um, telecom operator and also perhaps the police, Hong Kong police, and the telecom regulator, the OFCA, as a team. Uh, regularly we share some of the uh, cases that happen and that could be one of the effective way to deal with this deception. Secondly, I think it would be more uh, effective to do more education. I think uh, from the telephone reception cases, it's very obvious. Firstly, uh, the I, I recently I received one. The first thing he said, well, uh, uh, you are already banned from the entry to Hong Kong. But I, <laughs> I'm already in Hong Kong, right? So you, if you want to know more, uh, then push, I think it's a, another button, it's a zero. That obviously we know all oh, this is a, a potential deception call. Don't waste my time, I simply hang up, that's it. So that's come from uh, education. I think government, uh, um, the OFCA, or actually the whole industry should spend more time to educate the general community uh, how to deal with this uh, uh, deception call. And the other thing, w one thing Hong Kong do, right, I think uh, Andy, they set up a hot, line sent where right, is a hotline I, uh, which is, uh, is, uh, is great whatever suspected uh, deception call if you have doubt call this hotline and there will be some um, uh, officer able to uh, give you some advice that I think to Hong Kong I think given our legal and regula regulatory environment that's uh, something more effective to do in this way in, in uh, Dongguan, the way they do it is, uh, is really uh, different, very effective, I must admit it, but because of Hong Kong is Hong Kong, we, we very difficult to follow that. That's uh, on the fixed side, the voice uh, deception. On the data side, I think it's uh, becoming more and more alarming. Right now, uh, we see uh, the, the recent research every day, there's more than 3,500 thousand uh, malware has been invented every day. So no matter how effective the anti-virus, uh, it's a very easy, they have come with uh, some variety and can easily bypass that. So given that, uh, in, in the internet world, uh, to, um, to increase the security, is, it, it becomes more challenging. And the other figure is very interesting. The average response rate to uh, this uh, cyber attack, it's roughly would take two, two days. So even with the sophisticated uh, uh, defense software or AI or other uh, advanced uh, uh, anti-cyber um, uh, attack uh, measurements, still we, on average, I think it's in uh, Asia Pacific region, take two days to have an effective response. So I think that's a challenge for us. And in our company, as, uh, uh, as uh, Stephen mentioned, we have invoice, we have similar app. Customer can subscribe that. So any unnecessary or suspected call actually will be filtered. But I would say that's a very uh, reactive way. In the uh, internet world, we also have a similar, in the mobile world, we have a similar value added service. You subscribe that, then you will be well protected when you uh, go to some suspicious uh, site, website, that probably you have a high risk to be, uh, 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 to be get involved. So that's another, uh, uh, we do very frequent now using multimedia uh, to actually try to uh, alert or actually to, um, to help our customers to understand more the recent potential cyber risk. In particular, we will use some of the uh, center push information, like the reason uh, major outbreak cases, uh, ransomware or the, uh, uh, the other major uh, outbreak, uh, which actually we find is uh, more effective to inform our customer right away. 
So um, roughly, that's uh, what we have done mm. in HKT. Thank you, Peter. But I know that the uh, in the IP, well, it's uh, very difficult to trace the origin of the core. But in the lab level, is there any way uh, certain you can save us? Okay, um, for Citec, we are providing the uh, international wholesale telecom services. So basically, we don't own our end users. Uh, our customers are actually the, the telecom operators. So we help them to interconnect with other, uh, other players in the world to uh, basically transit the services. Uh, for example, like voice, SMS, um, the roaming signaling, etc. So uh, what they are experiencing is exactly right because uh, a lot of these kind of uh, deception calls are coming from uh, other countries. So um, what we have done uh, in in our company is that we try to provide uh, we try to uh, look at the traffic pattern and provide some analytics because there are actually some characteristics in terms of uh, whether the traffic coming in are suspicious. For example, because of this kind of call nature, the, uh, usually the, uh, um, uh, the call duration would be shorter, and then they try to come in very frequently. So with this kind of pattern, we would be able to guess those traffic might be suspicious. And then uh, with this kind of information, we will be able to uh, inform our, the, the, um, our, um, the, the, uh, the, op the operator that are sending over this kind of traffic to try to stop all these hard traffic or we would uh, potentially stop the connection with them. So that's one way we can do that. Um, uh, another thing that we, are, uh, um, we could uh, work with the operator is that because we are also providing the uh, warming signaling information, uh, a lot of time, let's say here in Hong Kong, we are seeing the international call coming in, but they are with the plus A52 uh, Hong Kong country call coming in. So are those real uh, customers trying to call back to Hong Kong for uh, sort of uh, uh, while they are in in the warming status, or uh, these are someone try just trying to uh, uh, fake out the the calling number. So uh, a lot of time we might not be able to know that. So with the uh, warming signaling information, we could correlate whether the user are actually roam out to a certain country, and with this kind of information, we will be able to determine whether the call is valid or, or invalid. So this kind of uh, 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 technical solution would be available from our side, but we have to work with the operator. For example, um, the operator who uh, we help them to do the uh, signaling uh, uh, transit, we can help them to provide their, their end users roaming status. But there are other operators or uh, other users. We will, not, we will not be able to provide the same information to uh, that operator. So. Uh, there are a lot of uh, coordination would be required, and then we also work with a lot of uh, um, carriers in mainland China. Um, uh, we also know that they have a lot of uh, internal coordination. For example, they have sort of like a, a blacklist pool. When they send traffic over to them, um, they might inform us that uh, uh, some of those numbers are actually uh, suspicious, and we should not uh, send them over to, uh, uh, through those circuits because uh, they have that kind of coordination internally in China. So hopefully if we uh, would be able to work together and come up with this kind of solution uh, for Hong Kong, then we might be able to stop more of this kind of uh, suspicious call coming into Hong Kong. I see. Thank you, Sutton. Well, actually, I'm the one who conducted the interview to all the service provider. And one question I always ask, um, do you ever, or is there any single incident your customer, ba customer base has been had? And so far, done. So we are all safer with our current uh, operators. <laughs> okay, now, Christmas is coming. Although I'm not uh, the Santa Claus, but uh, you can make some wish, and I hope your wish will come true. So Andy, your turn. Now, all the operators are here, and then we have the uh, regulators sitting over there. The legislator is uh, 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 here. So any wish you would like to uh, ask the operator to cooperate with the center to fight against the uh, telephone deception? <laughs> Thank you so much, Hubert, for giving me this uh, Christmas wish. <laughs> um, as the um, speaker said, um, collaboration uh, between the um, network provider is of uh, paramount, paramount importance, I think. Um, I would like to appeal that there is, we would need a more um, closely collaborated platform. I make a sense. Maybe I give you an example in 
this is a private public partnership platform. In fighting against money laundering in Hong Kong, we have a private partnership platform between the law enforcement, that is the Hong Kong police, the regulator, that is the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, um, the, um, and the industry, the Hong Kong Association of Banks, like, like you will see HK, and also the retail banks. We have that platform to share information betwe between the private and partner, private and, and, and public, share intelligence, and we work together to fight against anti-money laundering, and that is very successful. And so far we have um, uh, running for over a year, and we, the uh, result has been uh, amazing. So I, I think if there's a chance that um, if we could work together, like um, law enforcement, the police, the industry, CHK, the OFCA, the regulators, as well as the network operator, whether we can build up a partnership, we have a platform, we can share, we can meet regularly, or we can uh, meet as, an, as necessary, or we, I, I, I don't know exactly whether the, the, the form will be, but there at least we can build up work together we have for example we have a um, email platform or any uh, any other platform so so that whenever there is any um, upsurge of particular kind of um, scam then we can work together to fight against them and we meet regularly to see whether we are as a measure to tackle the crime because um, it is only education is important but prevention in the level of the network operator level is also very important because there are there's so many different ways that um, we can actually, at the network operator level, can do something to prevent, so, like uh, call blocking. Blocking uh, perhaps is more sensitive, but maybe there you can issue some alert message if they encounter a, a, a highly suspicious call, can give out alert message to the user, such kind of things. Um, many examples in different uh, over other jurisdictions, particularly in the mainland China, they have a lot of um, solution to that. Um, so I hope that really, um, because um, we do also need the regulatory support uh, in the, and in the um, uh, submission in the, in, the, in, the, in the yearbook, they said that uh, the OPCA said they will that the collaboration between relevant parties is very crucial to prevention of this kind of crimes. So uh, I, I really reckon that. Um, so I think um, if we have we have the regulatory support, we have their leadership, then we can work out together and to make Hong Kong safe and um, to make Hong Kong a uh, uh, telecom a, a telecom fraud free society. That's my wish. I see. I don't think our chairman, uh, Mr. Ken, and I have arrived. So uh, Ken, can you come forward? Now, before you make a response to this uh, request, um, I would like to see the response from the operator, and then I know that your answer will according to the response, right? Okay, maybe uh, Peter, you said. Okay. Respond. <laughs> okay. I, I certainly uh, agree with Andy's uh, suggestion. I think that's the uh, uh, next step forward. Uh, industry force is a very, very powerful. And um, even though now Hong Kong, in terms of telephone deception and the cyber security, on average, the trend is not as serious as overseas. I think it's a good sign. We really do a good job. I must say that uh, police play a very important role in this. Uh, but now we, we see there's a room to improve, like um, the regulator. And fortunately, we have the honor of a guest Agnes, the uh, Director General from Africa, will join us. Is your wife already? Not yet, I don't think oh. so, yeah. <laughs> and uh, certainly, is a, uh, we might have a word with Agnes on this. And uh, this is the right way I think the industry should go. Share more information, learn more from overseas country, and that is the effective way to further reduce the crime, yeah. cyber security. Okay, Evelyn. I think it's, um, I, I'm, I really agree and actually to, to combat uh, the cyber crime, I think um, in Hong Kong, especially in Hong Kong, the com uh, uh, communication operator, I think it's good to cooperate together to uh, maybe and set a, um, just like a HK, uh, so this kind of the association 
and then we can co uh, share our uh, maybe some scam or some uh, de de defection. All, all the same information can share together for a some like a social media and and this kind of thing. So I think this it, it can be um, maybe a start for our for our operator to do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think I would like to wish all of us Hong Kong uh, have a very happy, peaceful, and uh, joyful Christmas. Uh, going back to the wish, I, I fully agree and support, you know, we as an industry, we should work together. But I think we all should also share all the best practice, be it in Hong Kong or globally. I, I'm sure a lot of activity going on, but also in return, a lot of, uh, you know, talent being be developed, try to you know, work better to fight against you know all this uh, cyber crime. It's only us to work together, to share the practice, to share the database, and and learn from each other uh, rather than to compete among ourselves. Try to be you know uh, clever in, in different uh, different aspect. I think that's very important. Um, I learned uh, you know if the crime there they have been so so intelligent then. Only one of us are not, you know, sufficient to 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 fight against all. So, all together, you know, the regulator, government, police, and I've even at actually Hong Kong Security Center also can give us a very good input on what's going on elsewhere, and so that we can better prepare ourselves. I'm sure Sutton support this idea. Of course. Okay. So, Chairman, what do you say? Well, I really I really hope that I can be. In Santa Claus, that can realize all your dreams come true this year. Okay, okay, very good. Now, we still have some time uh, open to the floor. I'm sure some of us here had a uh, bad experience or even a victim. So can you <laughs> share with us uh, some of your bad experience so we can learn a lesson from you? Uh, Frankie? Where's Frankie? <laughs> you told us <laughs> you are, you are, you were a victim, huh? Stories yeah, can you tell your victim story? I'm becoming the victim for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what can I help? My case? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, one day, I, my company, my financial manager, received an email uh, under my name and asking her to transfer around $1.5 million to Philippines. <laughs> and then uh, she res responded to that as a uh, uh, Frankie, from which account you want the money to be sent out? Then the reply is the normal one. <laughs> and then she asks again whether the normal personal account or the company account, because I never <laughs> asked her to transfer money into a Philippine country. And then, fortunately, our company have a system that is have multiple signature before any uh, TT away. And obviously, it, it won't be success. Then at that time, after I got this story, I called up uh, Jolly, uh, at that time who was the, in the police department, 99 centers head, and I asked, her what, what, asked him what should I do, and said she, he said, told me, okay, being a good citizen, you better report it to the police, but it may not be helped too much. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason behind is because um, uh, there's no, um, uh, they can help to trace, but uh, ultimately uh, I do my part to report this case to the police. But uh, it is quite common in Hong Kong, I have to share with you. Not only my company problem, I, because that is the common behavior or, or experience of a lot of companies in Hong Kong. That's why we, have, we must be very alert. And um, I was being interviewed in the book, BookNet. And one of us, uh, I really trust that in order to f fly that kind of cyber crime, different industry, including the government, see Hong Kong's member, Industry bodies like the Bank Association and the others have to work together to fight crime under the Hong Kong environment. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, um, how about our former chairman, Stephen? So, you have a similar experience <laughs> or even worse? No, I know, I never have no experience. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. I know that I'm going to be picked to talk about something which I don't want to and I don't know how. But, <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I re really genuinely think um, this, uh, in fact, I've, I've been talking to somebody today earlier uh, in one of the luncheons and I said, 
why does people and why do people pay for those money uh, over the web, right? When when somebody says, you know, on this, this sort of site that you will be dating people and there are victims that, I mean, it's fine that you pay for a few hundred dollars or a thousand of passions and so on, but really, you know, there, you know, if you are paying things, you know, up to six or seven digits, that is something that I really don't understand. However, I think all of us here and, you know, we should talk to our friends and family that we have to be v vigilant and very careful about messages that sent to us through social media, uh, messaging, you know, WhatsApps and so on in such a way that, you know, we need to be a little suspicious when somebody asks you some money, right? I am a guy who is overly cautious because I have a bank uh, account in Samjian, right? And they keep on calling me because they want me to have this, this tax number. And uh, I never answered those calls, right? Until they wrote to, they write to me and I got actually three letters at my home, uh, including my, my wife as well. <laughs> and I realized that somebody wants to have my bank account, so I sorted out actually today, this morning. Uh, but I'm very, very cautious and suspicious about that. And I wish everybody would be cautious and suspicious. Um, there, there is absolutely uh, uh, no mistake to be cautious. And I hope that, you know, audience here and speakers here will agree to me that we need to be uh, vigilant about that because crime is everywhere and it is almost impossible to avoid it, right? So, uh, so I, this, is, this is really what I really want to say. Be vigilant, um, be careful. And uh, try to try to do a conversation first. You know, if if you find out something is wrong, um, be like Frankie says, be a good citizen. To report it to the police. Thank you. Good. Well, since our legislator Charles Mott here, can you come forward to share some of your wisdom as far as the uh, cybercrime and telling deception is concerned? Well, actually, I I very totally agree with Stephen. Your what you said because I think. The most important thing that maybe we certainly we need more education, and maybe that is one area that uh, the carriers can get together to help as well. Uh, for me, I usually, I always not usually, I always just hang up. You know, today I get another call. You know, I'm calling from what bank, and uh, I, I we have a special offer. Usually, I won't even get to that far, but I, and I would all I would can hang up because I think. Uh, there needs to be some education for everyone in Hong Kong to, to tell them that, you know, you will never lose something. Don't worry. Uh, somebody calling from immigration department or even the police, okay, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't hang up on the police. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but uh, usually, I mean, don't, don't, don't give out information, right? Don't give out any information. But I think going back to your first question and the first part of your discussion, setting up a platform for sharing between the carriers and maybe in the, not just the mobile carriers, maybe there would be other important stakeholders to also involved. Uh, that might be a good idea because we see that intelligence sharing has been one of the very important tools for the industry uh, to try to uh, get early warnings and to fight these kind of uh, crime trends. Thank you, Charles. So, um, Chairman Ken, so can you uh, put uh, this uh, in the agenda of our next uh, EXCO meeting to set up a center to share information? Where do you go? Okay. All right, before we close this uh, discussion, uh, maybe uh, each one of you here, uh, may I you use uh, one or two statements to give advice to the general public how to fight again? Telephone deception. Yeah, one or two statements, some kind of uh, advice. Anybody? Uh, my advice is uh, if a uh, suspicious call, we all know that. Uh, don't try to follow further. Just hang up. And this is easier way to avoid. And you wouldn't lose anything. And But, but my m more concern is uh, not in the voice world. It's on the internet world. Uh, IoT will become very popular. And you know, IoT is a subject to this uh, hacker very easily. So one of the surveys said that in the in next year, the cyber security attack on IoT would be double, uh, grow by 200%. So as a whole industry, we should put some more effort and focus on how to prevent that, the new technology bring along with this cyber attack. 
Actually, so from from uh, IT side and also technology side, I know and I, I think um, you should know that there are many company and also do the uh, digitalization transformation in in their organization. It is a good technology and advanced technology to be in place in the organization, but it also a way for attack. Uh, to be to at least it's a vulnerability will be easier to for the attack to be uh, to be at, uh, to to go to our account, uh, organization. So other than our organization to advance their technology and at least we need to uh, think about what's the sophisticated method to um, to combine our um, the those those attack as well and. Come back to the uh, to the answer. How we can uh, prevent? I think the the main uh, main concern is about the customer awareness. How we can prevent that uh, that telephone uh, deception? Because uh, the education from from TV or from um, from the police force and from the operator, I think is very important to our customer to en ensure uh, they they know this type of the uh, scam. This is my view. It's difficult, or easy. Uh, I think apart from customer education, uh, we we need to enforce or, or, or emphasis. I think just a uh, simple things that be always be curious and not to take everything for granted. Uh, while we are looking for convenience, always I think it's no harm for us to always double ask ourselves whenever you are asked to give out personal information. Uh, if you're not sure, ask your friend. And ask your, you know, colleague or peers to see whether, you know, they have experienced similar situation. I think that's basically how can I, how can I see how can we, on a daily basis, just raise awareness. Um, people try to be lazy and take it take convenience as the most important part. But then it will be also easy for in the trap to give out information. So just also double question why and. Maybe that's a, a starting point. Absolutely agree. Um, I think stay alert all the time. So whenever you have to give out personal information or a password or you try to download something, you have to uh, think twice whether you really have to do it. Um, if you have questions, you can ask someone else or, uh, to ensure that what you're doing is it's valid. So um, many of us uh, said about cautious, why, curious, so you know the damage has been done. Nowadays, people don't just don't believe there's a genuine call. Any telephone call you with, whether there may be a real one, maybe a call from hospital, you would you, you would you you suspect that it would be a, whether it's a scam. So in order to protect the um, the um, telecommunication industry, to protect the our uh, society free of scam. We, need to, we do need to work together to collaborate, and we do need to do proactively, not just waiting for a fraudster to commit a crime and then we tackle, but rather we need to do it proactively. So this is my... Two Thank words. you, Andy. Now, at the end of this cover story, I call a statement from Albert Einstein. He said, freedom, in any case, is only possible by constant struggling for it. And I interpret it here, stand for IT. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, because of the limit of time, we cannot cover so many information. So I advise you, by all means, you get a copy before you leave the room. And uh, we are not living in a safe world, particularly in the cyber world, but uh, luckily, we have some people like our panelists today who devoted the time, the effort, the passion to safeguard our security and safety in the cyber world. So with that, Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in thanking our panelists in a cyber manner.